You asked and I answered. I'm so excited to share with you this DIY renter-friendly fireplace. So let's get started. So last year I fulfilled a lifetime dream of having my very own fireplace by taking matters into my own hands and building this full wall unit. I surprised myself. I blew my own mind. I had no idea that I was capable of doing something like this. And that just goes to show you how powerful we really are. Now, I got a lot of good response on this fireplace, but I had a lot of comments of people asking me to do a renter friendly version. They said, I would love to have a fireplace that kind of looks like that, but I need it to be portable. I have designed a renter-friendly version of this. We are going to build it together today. Let's go get powerful outside. All right, so here is the plan. So as you can see, it's a very similar design style to my main fireplace. I've scaled it down. My fireplace inside is 72 inches wide. This is only gonna be 48. So you can adjust the measurements depending on the space that you live in. I've also got up here, like the profile, what I want the profile to look like, and then some of my measurements here. If you're interested in my rough sketches here, I can provide a link for that. Just let me know in the comments. So this is my new toy. It is a table saw and I just got it. If you have some wood on hand, you could use a circular saw, use what tools you have. The first thing I'm going to do is take the wood that I have, rip it down to the dimensions that I am going to be doing. I'm going to be doing some side panels. Okay, so this is a cutoff piece from my um, recent barn door that I made. And we need three pieces that are 12 inches by 48 inches. This is 48 inches, which is the typical width of a piece of plywood. I am using three quarters inch and then width wise we're at 15 inches so we're going to just cut off three inches of this and then I have another one just like it and so then we'll have two of our panels. Okay so you saw that I wanted to cut three inches off of it so all we do is lift this up and then we can slide this over to three inches right there and then we'll lock this back down into place and that should rip off three inches and just to kind of double check i'm going to just make a mark and we can see if that mark lines up make sure to put on safety glasses and earplugs if you need them Okay, so we have two at 48 inches. They were already 48 inches to begin with. Then we have two long pieces that we need to cut down. This first one, we are cutting down to 48 inches. And then the next one, we're gonna cut down to 46 and a half inches because you'll see that it's gonna be wedged in between the pieces of wood. Let's cut. So now we are cutting the hearth area, which is gonna be 11 and a half inches tall. And then it's gonna be the total width of our fireplace. I've got that marked. And then this cutoff area, we're gonna make some four and a half inch pieces. All right, before we started building it, I kind of wanted to show you how it's gonna all be laid out. The most important thing is the top of this piece needs to be lined up with the top of the hearth. Basically, we want to make sure, see how that's a little too high. We are gonna make um, some marks to where we can get this piece to line up with this piece, even though it will be jutted out. This is the bottom half of our side panels, and we are going to take our hearth, and I just like to use the piece of wood, the actual wood rather than the dimensions, just because then I know it's exact. Then we're going to literally trace a line here on the inside. And then just so we know where we're supposed to be lining things up, you can see the line here. We're gonna take just this piece because it's light and easy to work with to measure the thickness. So you can see this is where this piece needs to line up and we need to put in like nails in here right and then we're gonna go ahead and do that again on the outside so i went in for 
for lunch and I was thinking about everything and I made a little change. My original plan was everything is even all the way um, around, but then I got thinking about it and I planned on having the top piece jut out a uh, couple of inches rather than put another piece of wood on top adding more weight to this piece i decided to just make the top piece jut out now which means we kind of need to treat it with finish nails and so it's still the same 48 inches wide it's just now 13 and a half inches deep because we're going to add also some trim around the edge. We are gonna start out by putting some wood glue on the end pieces here. And it's not gonna feel super sturdy at first, but I promise by the end, we will have a very sturdy piece of furniture. And this is where we are going to attach our top of our hearth piece and we're going to do some wood glue on either side right in that line area and then I'm just going to tack this into place using my finish nailer for now and then I'm going to put a couple of the mega nails in. Okay so you can kind of see our loose frame here it's going to come together more all right because we want this to be sturdy i have some extra lumber this is in my scrap pile we are going to make a whole bunch of like 45 degree angle cuts so that we can put these in the corner for corner supports we're going to just put this at a 45 degree angle so we're just going to make some 45 degree cuts We've got these to act as braces in the corner. We're gonna just put on a little wood glue and do some finish nails. I'm not an experienced carpenter. I'm just kind of doing this as I go. I have a basic idea of what I want to accomplish, but we need to build some sort of frame here for our face plate to go onto. We'll see how this goes. So this is just some of the leftover cutoffs. Um, you can use two by fours. I'm using this because I have this on hand. It will be a little bit lighter, but it will give us something to, to nail the other stuff into. So we're gonna just put some glue all the way around this. We are going to kind of wedge this down into place. It is a good fit. I'm just gonna make sure it's lined up on one side, get one side nailed in, and then we'll line it up on the other side. Okay, now we're creating an opening for the fireplace and also a place for us to put like trim. So we need 20 and a half, which is right at that knot, believe it or not. And that's where the bottom of that should go. We'll just kind of hammer that into place. Before we got too far in, I wanted to kind of dry fit our unit here, snug as a bug. <laughs> that is a perfect fit right there. So then we are going to put like some support beams right here, some support beams like over here. Now you can see me adding in some more support braces here. This is to support our electric fireplace unit, our face plate, and also add some things for our trim to be able to nail into since our face plate is only gonna be a quarter inch thick. I used to skip the wood glue a lot of the times, but it really does help to strengthen our piece. All right, that's a perfect fit. It's 12 and a half from edge to edge. Now I'm gonna run one more strap across there for some trim as well, just as a brace. All right, 
I've decided to add a little center support to kind of aid in the hearth building. And you, it's not gonna be as long as the side, so this won't touch the ground really. It's just more for something for it to attach to. Dolly wanted to say hi. Say hi, Dolly. <laughs> oh, she's so sweet. Yeah. All right, so we've made really good progress. The weather's not holding up, it's raining. And so we're gonna call it a day and hopefully finish this up tomorrow. I'm really excited about the progress and I am more excited to have an awesome fireplace for my bedroom. Okay, so now it's time to build out our hearth and we've got some supports for it. We're gonna build it kind of like on the back side and then flip it out, then we'll add from there. Okay, so we're gonna make some measurements and marks of where we're gonna be putting stuff. The first one is right smack in the center. Then we'll put one on the end and then we need to put one kind of where we're gonna do some trim, which is seven inches on center. So now we are going to attach the hearth and the DIY dolly has come out to assist us. <laughs> so we'll also hopefully not scare her. Okay, so we're gonna put some wood glue to kind of strengthen what we're doing here. And hopefully she doesn't decide to lick it. Now we are going to lift this up, set it into place. So really the only place we can kind of nail it in is right along this ledge here. So we are going to put quite a few. Okay, so we're gonna make some corner braces like we made for the back. Uh, and we are going to make them for the hearth area twofold to kind of secure that hearth on there a little bit better. But also because I promised you that we were gonna be making this renter friendly, kind of portable. And to make it easier, we are going to add some wheels. Now I got this idea from some friends of ours who do have a portable fireplace that they kind of haul from home to home and they put theirs on wheels to make it easier. So we, I have them here to just make sure that we have enough space on these pieces. As you can see here, we are adding a place for our wheels to attach to, and we need to make sure that they only poke out, that our wheels only poke out one quarter of an inch so you don't notice them. And when it's on the carpet, you don't see them at all. So I am making sure those measurements are accurate right now. And then I use a little wood glue and finish nails to hold them into place temporarily, but I do go back in later and put some nice thick screws and screw them into place so that just they are much more secure to support our wheels. So we'll cut off the section for the hearth and then we'll, this will be the, for the top. And then I've got a little scrap piece of this that I can put along the top. And so we are looking really good. I'm happy with the progress. And once we get this on, then we can start doing all the pretty decorative stuff, which is what I've been waiting for the entire time. <laughs> Now I'm cutting mine down and using my table saw. Another option for you if you don't have a table saw is to have the home improvement store cut these pieces down for you. Or you could also use a circular saw or a jigsaw if you have a, a steady hand. Then we take our top piece and kind of dry fit it over the front. Okay, so I've got it kind of tacked into place here. And so we can just kind of draw where our opening is and where we need to cut a hole out. Then I just use my jigsaw to cut a hole for our fireplace insert. And then we just nail this into place. So 
So for the trim part, it's gonna be straight cuts. It's gonna be easy. We're gonna bust this out and then hopefully be able to prime and paint it before it rains. <laughs> And then we'll get it painted and then I will tell you what we will be doing for right around the fireplace. So let's get busting this out. Okay, so I wanted to show you what we we're doing. So my trim is gonna be this thick. And so we're gonna make a mark where it is, right in there. So then we are gonna kind of bring that around to this side. And then we know that this is where we want our actual trim to start because this will hang down and hang, hide any trim that we've got. using one by twos for this part which is smaller than what I used on my main fireplace but again this is a much smaller fireplace than we built in my living room so just keep that in mind when you are adjusting the size of what you are building if you decide to build a bigger version of this then you can use bigger trim as well but I really wouldn't go over a one by three basically we want to leave about a five and a half inch opening all the way around where the fireplace unit will be going. I do the vertical pieces first and then I do the horizontal. And we don't forget our hearth, but as we are building our hearth, we need to keep in mind that we are going to be putting some kind of finish like a tile, or you could just paint it out and not do this finish on the top. But I decided to use a pill and stick tile that you're kind of getting a sneak peek of right here. And this is what it looks like. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this corner situation here. Um, my original plan was is I wanted all of this to kind of line up on the front and then I was gonna use some silicone to kind of cover up that and then kind of just like patch and putty this. But the more I look at it, the more I don't like that. And so what I think I'm gonna do is pull this one off, make these pieces a little bit longer so that I can put this here and this will kind of cover up it. Otherwise we'll have kind of like a weird corner. We'll put some slats here and then we'll do like another little thing to cover that up. And so this will be covered in trim. It will also kind of disguise our um, peel and stick tile that will be coming up to the edge and it will, you know, cover up those edges. Okay, so we're gonna just pry this off. Awesome. Does this look? We covered up all of the ugly pretty much on the side. I'm not gonna do anything up here, but it looks great. The last thing we need to cut before we do the very important next steps, we are going to just take this one by four, I believe it is. It's actually three and a half inches. And we are going to miter this around the top see so it will look like a nice mantle and we won't have any seams if we miter it out so we're gonna set this on here for just a second but we need to move this over to 45 okay 45 and then we're gonna take the very edge of this off I only have one of these boards and so I can't afford to make big mistakes <laughs> That's what that should look like. I should have worn my glasses, oops. So don't do that. Always wear your glasses. There we go. <laughs> All right, we're gonna swing it around the other 45. Okay, so we're gonna only tack this on for right now just to make sure that it's gonna work. Um, only because 
I think I want to paint this without this on, but I need to make sure that the measurements are going to work. Awesome as that. That looks so awesome. So at this point, you are going to be tired. You are going to be just so over the project, but this is very important. Do not skimp or skip on the next part because it's the difference between a very professional looking project and one that looks DIY. We are going to very painstakingly putty and caulk every crack, every crevice. And then we're gonna sand it down and make it look pristine prior to painting. I promise you, if you do this, you won't regret it, so. <laughs> Let's soldier on. We got this. Then I stain my mantle in a brighter smoke gel stain, which is kind of a gray color. And then after that dries, I carefully cover up the mantle. I next prime our piece using a paint sprayer. And it was a very hot day, so this all dried very quickly. And so after that was dried, then I painted the entire thing using the same paint sprayer using semi-gloss latex paint in the color extra white which i believe is a sherwin williams color after the paint dried i attached the wheels and you can see how easily i'm able to push it by myself with those wheels and you can also kind of get a glimpse of how similar our unit looks to the original one Okay, we are so super close. We've got it in place. I have not sealed this yet just because I'm not sure that this is the color that it's gonna stay. It's just gonna kind of depend on what I end up deciding once my new bed comes. We will be doing a bedroom final makeover on my primary bedroom in just a couple of weeks. And so once I get the bed in here, I'll kind of finalize the color. But as for now, I really like this. But we are missing something right <laughs> and that is some sort of tile or whatnot on my fireplace downstairs I used brick like a faux brick and I painted it out white it added beautiful texture I wanted to do something a little bit different for this one so I ordered this peel and stick tile off of Wayfair and we are gonna just use it all around the surround here. We're gonna start by lining it up in the center and then we're gonna move outward. I would venture to guess most of you have not seen one of these or you've seen something similar probably in your schools that used for like chopping like paper. This one is specifically designed for vinyl tile. I will put a link for one of these in the description box below. I bought this, oh, I don't know, like 10 years ago. Go. I haven't used it a ton but it's worked good for me and I'm gonna go ahead and just use it to cut our tile very easily so we're gonna just start from the center work out and then we'll slip in our insert you can see I've got a plug right there and then we'll be done <laughs> it was a lot of work but I'm really excited this is gonna be a really nice feature here in my bedroom let's wrap up this project <laughs> Just lift this up all the way. We're gonna line it up where that cut needs to be made. And see if it works. All 
right, so I want the full tiles up top. Um, so this is like kind of a random cut. And so we'll just do that for now. And then we'll peel off the backing, line it up and hope for the best. So we may need to use a straight edge and a razor on some of this. Since this is kind of a corner piece, we'll probably just go ahead and use like a carpenter square and a knife. And then we might just use this chopper for the edge here. So these tips should be pretty easy to get off. So that's that side. But for this one, we're gonna go get a razor blade and a carpenter square. So I have this. And because we want to protect this side of the tile, we are going to line this up and I'm just going to put my knee on it and put some weight on it up here. And then we're going to score two, two or three times, maybe four. Okay, let's see if we can snap it. After getting all of our peel and stick tiles into place, I go back in with some caulk and caulk all around the edges to finish it off nicely. There were also a couple of gaps in our like hexagon like tiles that were really bothering me. So anywhere those were where I felt like there was not a close enough seam, I just went back in with that same caulk and filled in those gaps as well. And it kind of acted as a grout, even though the tile that we selected really didn't require that, but I just did feel like that helped hide some of the imperfections and then you just go back in over the top with like a damp rag and kind of wipe off any of that caulk residue and then we put in our insert and that's it it was a lot of work I'm not gonna lie about that it took me a couple of days to build but there's just something very satisfying about building something so beautiful every time you look at it you're gonna just feel such a great sense of pride and you are going to feel so powerful. I am just thrilled with how this fireplace turned out. It's beautiful. I love it. And what I love about it the most is that it's on wheels and I can take it with me wherever I go. Should I move? can just wheel it out of the house and take it to my next one and then I'll feel like home wherever I am. Now if you enjoyed this episode here's another one that I think you'll like as well and if you haven't done so already consider hitting that subscribe button right there it's super easy to do and I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know we'll see you next time bye <laughs>